Have you ever wanted to create your own custom acrylic keychains or vibrant professional looking signs? What if I told you it's easier than you think? Welcome back to Velve Creations. Today we're unlocking the power of Lightburn's print and cut wizard to create these amazing projects from start to finish. This technique is a game changer and it all begins with a solid design file. So let's jump into Adobe Illustrator and get started. We're working with a design from Creative Fabrica. For this tutorial, we'll make two keychains, but remember this exact process scales up perfectly, whether you're making a full sheet of keychains or a large acrylic sign. First, let's duplicate our design. Now for the most critical part of this entire process, adding registration marks. These are just simple crosshairs that will act as our alignment targets, guaranteeing the laser cuts in the exact same spot we print. To make them, simply create two lines, rotate one 90 degrees to form a plus sign, and make sure they are perfectly centered. We'll place one at the top and one at the bottom of our designs. Pro tip, the farther apart your crosshairs are, the more accurate light burn can be. Once they're placed, we recommend converting the line paths into solid shapes by outlining and merging them. Now, to keep our project organized, we need to create two separate files, one for printing and one for cutting. Our preferred method is to duplicate the entire artboard. You can do this by selecting the artboard tool on the side menu or by hitting Shift O. Perfect. Now we have two identical artboards. The artboard on the left will be our print file, which keeps the full color design. The one on the right will be our cut file. For this one, we can delete the detailed interior graphics, leaving only the outer cutting path. We like to use just the outlines for the cut file. It makes it visually clear that this file is for the laser. The absolute key here is that the designs and the crosshairs on both files must be in the exact same position. Don't move anything. Grouping all the elements on each artboard is a great way to prevent accidental shifts. With our two files ready, it's time to export them and head over to our UV printing software to bring the design to life on our material. While we get that set up in UFIMake, let's cover a few key details. This method isn't just for UV printers. You can use it with sublimation or even for creating perfectly cut packaging or invitations on cardstock. Also, don't worry about the size of your design right now. You can make it as large or small as you want in Illustrator. Lightburn will handle all the scaling for the cut, as long as those registration marks are in place. All right, we've placed our quarter inch plywood into the Eufy Make printer. When it comes to print settings, you have complete creative freedom. For a project like this on wood, we love printing with just CMYK and no white ink. This technique stains the wood rather than covering it, allowing that beautiful natural grain to show through. The most important thing here is to make sure your entire design, including both of those crucial registration marks, fits on the material. With that confirmed, we're ready to print. And just like that, our design is printed. Now for the magic part, let's take this over to the laser cutter and bring it into Lightburn. First things first, let's import our cut file. That's the one with just the outlines and registration marks. Once imported, we need to ungroup the design. This allows us to select the crosshairs independently from the keychain outlines. Before we go any further, now is the perfect time to make sure your laser is homed and properly focused on the material. With that done, let's launch the print and cut wizard. Go to the menu bar and click laser tools, then select print and cut and start wizard. This awesome tool will now ask you to align the laser with the registration marks you printed. Select the first mark in the dialog box. Now, using the move controls, jog your laser head so it's positioned directly over the center of the first printed crosshair. Our one laser XRF has an inline red dot pointer, which makes lining this up incredibly simple. Your goal is to get it perfectly centered. If your laser has an offset red dot, that will work great too, as long as it's well calibrated. If you don't have a red dot or wanna be exceptionally precise, you can temporarily lower your laser's power to just 10% and pulse the laser, adjusting the position until the tiny mark it makes is dead center. We'll link to an excellent in-depth video from Lightburn that demonstrates this low power method perfectly. 
Once you're happy with the position, click set in the wizard. Now we just select the second registration mark and repeat the exact same process to lock in our alignment. While we set up this second registration mark, we would like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, let us know in the comments. We're especially curious to hear your thoughts on our new AI voice. We know it is not everyone's cup of tea, but it's a tool that helps us get these videos out to you faster, and we think it sounds great. Let us know what you think. If you would like to support our channel, check out the links we have in the bio for the Eufy Make E1, as well as the latest laser to our channel, the One Laser XRF. Okay, now that we have the mark positioned, let's head back into Lightburn. If at any point of the process you scaled your design, whether before printing or after importing it in a light burn, you will want to select the scaled option here. And that brings us to pro tip number two, select both of your crosshairs. Now go down to the color palette at the bottom and assign them to one of the T layers, T1 or T2. These are tool layers. This tells Lightburn that these marks are for alignment only and ensures they won't be accidentally cut or engraved. The final step in Lightburn is to dial in our cutting settings. For projects with a printed surface like this, our preferred method is to use a very low laser power with multiple passes. This strategy minimizes heat and prevents any smoke residue from staining the face of the design, giving you a cleaner result right off the bed. An excellent alternative, especially for larger jobs, is to apply masking tape over your print before you start. To do this effectively, you would simply place your registration marks a bit further away from your designs back in Illustrator, leaving a clear, unprinted area for the masking. We're going with the multi-pass method today. It is also important to note that at this point, you will see the design remain in the same exact spot and look way too large for your print. That is okay, because in the background, Lightburn has scaled, rotated, and positioned the design perfectly. You can verify this by framing your project. Here we can see that it is perfectly outlining our keychains. With that verified, we can click Start. Once you get the hand of this process, you can really knock out a ton of projects. And in a moment, you will see how accurate this laser can be. Our first attempt at this was just a few days ago, and we are super impressed with the results. We also really like making acrylic keychains and signs with this method. We will typically print the design upside down on the clear acrylic with a layer of CMYK followed by white. It creates a really high quality and vibrant project. But first, let's take a look at our new keychains. Here you can see just how precise that cut was. There is no blank wood left around the cut. And if we look at the remaining scraps, we can see that there isn't any color left either. So cool. Here are some of the other projects we tried. As mentioned, the acrylic ones are some of our favorites. And even with super detailed parts of the print, the laser and printer are super accurate with this method. With that, we would like to thank you all for watching. And as always, stay creative.